What's up guys, Ibra here with Hurricanex, and if you recall about a month ago, I put together an awesome kick-ass Threadripper gaming slash workstation PC. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, you can check it out right over here. Uh, but to sum it up, the build featured AMD's flagship 1950X 16-core 32-threaded CPU, uh, which was cooled by the NZXT X62 AIO cooler, 64 gigabytes of G-Skills glorious RGB Trident Z kit, a Strix GTX 1080 Ti from ASUS, all housed inside this beautiful Corsair Air 540 chassis. Now for storage, I was rocking two Samsung 960 Pro SSDs, one as my primary boot drive, along with storing a few of my recently obsessed titles, uh, and other being a scratch disk for Adobe Premiere. I was amazed by the read and write performance on these drives. We're talking roughly 3.5 gigabytes per second on read speeds and 2.1 gigabytes per second on writes. But it was right around the time when AMD announced their NVMe RAID support on X399 platform. And I was anticipating that update ever since that announcement. And now I'm here to walk you through the setup and some of the results that I was able to achieve after creating the RAID array. So without any further ado, let's get into it. To quickly refresh your memory, the 960 Pro is one of the fastest SSDs on the market that comes in an M.2 form factor. Its high level of NAND endurance is a great feature to embrace, especially for professional applications that heavily rely on reading and writing huge data sets, and they're backed by a five-year warranty, so that's awesome. Now, setting up a RAID array involves some serious precautionary steps, and let's address the obvious, and that's backing up your existing data. It is crucial that you complete this step as creating a RAID array would completely erase the data on your existing drives and it's pretty hard to recover that. If you have an existing SATA RAID configuration, AMD recommends that you back up that array's data and break down the current array before proceeding with the driver install and BIOS upgrade. Speaking of which, most motherboard manufacturers should have rolled out a BIOS update for their X399 boards that basically adds support for NVMe RAID. In my case, I'm using the ROG Zenith Extreme X399 motherboard, and I have updated the BIOS to version 701 as of making this video. This board features a single M.2 connector right underneath the PCH that comes uh, with a thermal pad, and there's this, a DIMM.2 card. It plugs into the slot right next to the memory modules, and it can have two additional M.2 drives installed, each of which has access to four dedicated PCI lanes, and this is what we'll be using to mount the SSDs. Initially, I was thinking of doing a bootable RAID setup, uh, but I thought to myself that I might complicate things down the road, so I decided to stick with a non-bootable array and use my three-year-old Samsung 840 Pro SSD as my primary OS drive. That's right, my friends, I will be using this three-year-old SSD, and believe it or not, it's still staying strong. Now, the RAID array is gonna be used to store creative applications like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, and some games. So that should contribute towards a much faster workflow. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's move on to the setup process. After updating the BIOS, I booted into Windows and downloaded the care package containing the AMD's RAID Expert 2 utility and the standalone NVMe RAID driver for Windows 10 directly from AMD's website. I'll link that down below. I should also mention that you should be running build 1703 of Windows as that's what's currently supported for this setup. Now the RAID driver is technically embedded within the executable file, i.e. the utility file which needs to be extracted. I set the extract destination to the desktop. Once the software version was updated, I then rebooted the system and proceeded to install the Expert 2 utility, which annoyingly was deeply hidden within AMD's root files. After installing that, I ran into a problem where the WebGUI didn't allow me to log in. Now by default, the username and password was admin admin, but oddly the submit button wasn't functioning. After spending countless hours of troubleshooting, I finally figured out the problem. Huge shout out to Wendell from Level 1 Techs who helped me uh, figure out what went wrong. So as you can see with the Expert 2 utility, the RAID level is set as zero, and that means that the NVMe RAID drivers aren't being detected. So the next step was to check out Device Manager and see if the drivers were installed properly. Now, NVMe SSDs require two parts on the software side to function properly, the disk driver and the NVMe controller driver. If the UEFI BIOS is up to date, then it's device manager related. In this case, I was using Samsung's NVMe driver that was downloaded and installed directly from Samsung's website. But in order for RAID to function, we have to upgrade that to AMD's NVMe driver. So what you wanna do is head over to storage controllers and select the Samsung NVMe controller. We have two NVMe SSDs in this case, so we have to update both of them manually. Uh, you then locate the standalone NVMe RAID driver zip file that you downloaded from AMD's website extract that and locate the RC bottom file within the RS2x64 folder, repeat that step for the other controller, then navigate down to system devices, 
find the AMD RAID config device and update that with the RCCFG file within the RS2 x64 folder. Finally, restart services for the RAID Expert 2 utility and log in. Once you create your username and password, you'll be directed to the main menu. Here we can see the two 960 Pro SSDs. We'll first have to initialize both drives. Upon completion, we are ready to create the new RAID array. Select the two drives, name the array, and hit Create. The last thing you want to do is initialize the disks within the disk management inside device manager and you're done. Now, what kind of performance can you expect when you decide to put two of these SSDs in RAID 0? Let's start with Crystal Disk Mark. We average read speeds around 6 gigabytes per second and writes around 4 gigabytes per second, guys. That's just um, that's just uh, insane. I, I, I really don't know what to, what to say. Yeah. Next up, running the 80 disk benchmark results in 3.9 gigabytes per second on read speeds and 3.8 gigabytes per second on writes. I should also mention that my CPU and memory were running at stock settings. So what happens when you overclock both of them? Would that impact our RAID Array's performance? Indeed, I ran the Crystal Disk Mark one more time after overclocking the CPU to 4 gigahertz and the memory to 2666 megahertz. And damn! Check out those read speeds, just a tad above 7 gigabytes per second on the read side and 4 gigabytes per second on the write speeds. I ran the 80 disk benchmark again and noticed a significant increase in read performance. We're talking an extra gigabyte per second, so to me, that was just phenomenal. And this makes sense because the processor houses the PCI lanes necessary for NVMe RAID, so the faster the processor, the higher the I.O. throughput. I also transferred a 20 gigabyte folder packed with 4K videos, a few game folders, and Excel files, and it took roughly 25 seconds to transfer from the desktop to the 960 Pro's RAID RAID. That's pretty fast, but as you can see, the speeds are hitting roughly 1.6 to 1.7 gigabytes per second on the read side of things. Uh, and I guess the primary bottleneck here is obviously the 840 Pro SSD. Uh, performing that backwards took roughly a minute. Uh, so once again, this is heavily due to the bottleneck or the 840 Pro SSD uh, being the bottleneck. So I'm gonna leave you guys on that note. I'd definitely like to hear your thoughts on NVMe support for Threadripper, uh, especially professionals out there who have already hopped onto X399. Do you see, if you you know currently have an N60 Pro SSD, uh, do you see yourself you know picking up another drive and configuring them in RAID to get those blazing fast read and write speeds? And of course, what do you think of, or what kind of applications do you think might take advantage of uh, this setup? Definitely let me know in the comments down below. A huge shout out to Samsung for sponsoring this video. By the way, stay tuned for the full performance segment of this build. Uh, it's still in the works. I'm still, you know, pulling up, uh, putting them together, a set of benchmarks that I like to run. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next video. Until then, I'm Ebro with HarukanX. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe for more similar content, and we'll see you in the next one.